Hi and welcome to my video in which I teach you and the Gift Gaff family how to code your very own game of tic-tac-toe. This is going to be a super beginner, I mean super beginner, tutorial. So if you've never touched code in your life, this is definitely the video for you. In this 15 minute video, I'm going to walk you through how to set up your code editor as well as take you through step by step so by the end you will have your very own basic game of tic-tac-toe. The reason it's going to be super basic is so that you can then take it, make it your own, level up, style it to the max, go wild, go mental. If you would like a more in-depth explanation into each inbuilt method that we're going to be using, please do visit my YouTube channel where I do go into them in way more detail, but hey it's not for everyone so I'm going to keep this one really light and simple. Once you have finished your game, I would absolutely love for you to share it with me. I'd love to see what you've made, so do reach out to me on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, whatever. Okay, so let's get going. Big love to the Gift Gap community. So the first thing we need to do is download the Atom Code Editor to your laptop. This will allow us to write code in our project files. If you haven't done so already, I suggest heading over to atom.io and pausing right here until it has been downloaded. I have actually made a tutorial on the ideal setup of Atom for your project, so if you want a more in-depth walkthrough on the pros of Atom and useful tips, please do head over to that tutorial on my YouTube now. Okay, now that we have Atom, search for your command line tool on your computer. On a Mac, simply go to your launch pad and type terminal. On a PC, you have to search for your command line prompt. As I have a Mac, I'm going to be using a terminal. Now, open up your terminal and create a folder on your desktop for all your projects. Do so by listing out all the directories like this. Now use CD to go into the desktop directory. I'm going to create a folder called tic-tac-toe. I will do so using the command mcdr. So let's type mcdr tic-tac-toe. Let's go into this folder again, so we use the command cd. Let's type cd tic-tac-toe. If you ever want to get out of this folder, we use the command cd with two dots, like this. But we don't, so let's go back into it. Now, we need to create files in this folder. We do so using the command called touch. Touch will create files. We need to create an HTML file, CSS file for our styling, and a JavaScript file to hold our JavaScript. I'm going to choose to call them index.html, style, CSS, and app.js. Okay, perfect. Now using atom dot, we will prompt the project to open in our atom code editor. Okay, great. Now let's get to writing some code. We will start off with our HTML file. HTML is a hypertext markup language file format used as the basis of a web page. What I am adding here is a standard HTML boilerplate. The first thing we're going to do is give our project a title in between the two title tags. As this is in between the two head tags, it will not show up in our browser. It will, however, show up in our tab. Now let's create our tic-tac-toe grid using divs. We will need nine divs that we will style into squares. If you refresh your browser, you will not see these divs as they have no styling. If you inspect the page, however, by pressing Ctrl and left-clicking in the browser, you will see they are in fact there. To add styling, we need some CSS, or Cascading Style Sheets. CSS is a style sheet language used for describing the presentation of a document written in a markup language like HTML. We already have a CSS file called Style CSS, we just need to link it to our HTML file using a link tag like this. We will also put the relative path of our style CSS file like this. As it's in the root of our project, we just type style CSS. Now let's flip over to our style sheet to make the divs look like squares in a grid. Let's start with making our squares. We need to pick out the divs from our HTML file and style them in our CSS file. We do so like this. Okay, now save your files and flip over to our browser. Great, but they don't look like a grid or stacked on top of each other. We can fix this by putting them in another div 
that is the square shape of our grid. Go back to your HTML and put our divs in a div and give them a class name of grid. And now let's flip to our CSS file to style it. If we want to target a class in our HTML rather than an element itself, we use a dot before the name. By writing dot grid, I'm saying I want to target the div with a class grid in our HTML and assign some styling to it. As I want my grid to be three by three squares of 200 pixels height and width, let's say, I will need to make my grid 600 by 600 pixels to fit them all in. Let's do that now. We also need to make the nine divs go left to right rather than stack. So for this, we use display flex. Okay, now refresh and amazing. Now it's time to start writing some JavaScript in order to give our game some functionality. First, we need to add a script tag in our HTML file to let our JavaScript tag talk to our browser. We do so like this. Now flip over to your JavaScript file. Let's start by writing a DOM event listener. This is what the script tag is listening to. From now on, all our code has to be written in this event listener. As with the style sheet, we need to pick out elements from our JavaScript to know what we want to target. We do so using document query selectors. Again, we will pick out the divs in the div of the class of grid using the dot we state that is a class. So type dot grid and then div and assign this to the const squares. Please note we used query selector all as we want all the squares. Okay, great. Now to make sure we only want the divs in the div with a class of grid to be styled this way, you know, in case we want to add other divs in the future, we use this syntax. Let's add this to the CSS file too. Okay, now the first thing I want to do is add an event listener to each square in our grid. I'm going to do this as I want to listen out for any time a square is clicked on and once it has been clicked on, I want something to happen. There is an inbuilt JavaScript method called for each that will help us do this. We will also use it with an arrow function. Arrow functions are a feature of ES6 and above, so if your Atom code editor isn't liking using the arrow function, I will suggest setting up extra bonus preference settings in your code editor, as per my video that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. Okay, so let's get our squares. For each, so for each item, or as I'm going to choose to call square, we add an event listener. This event listener says that every time we click a square, we invoke a function. This function we're going to call click outcome. Okay, so now let's write the function. We are just going to check if this works by making an alert pop up each time we invoke the function. Let's save and flip to our browser to check. Don't forget to refresh the browser. Okay, that works great. Let's comment that out. We need to pass through an E into our function. E is for event. We need this to find out exactly which square has been clicked using our knowledge of arrays, indexes, and E target. The first thing we're gonna do is turn our nine squares into an array. We do this using an inbuilt JavaScript method called array from. This will turn all the squares we collected into an array. We will need this for finding out the index of each square. So of our nine squares, each has an assigned index of zero to eight. We can find out exactly which one's clicked using eTarget and an inbuilt function called index of and assign it to the const called index like this. Let's use console.log to see which square is now being clicked. Remember, we could use console.log at any point in our JavaScript to figure out what is going on under the hood. The result of the console.log will show up when we inspect the page and click on the console. And there we go, we can see each outcome here. And again, and again. Okay, great. Now, let's decide who is currently playing. To start the game, let's just say that the first player is always going to be player X. So using let, we write this. We want player X to be a string. We write this in between two single quote marks like this. That means string. 
We want to show this in our browser too. Flip back to your HTML and add an H3 tag with the ID of player. Let's hard code player X to always start the game. No need to worry about player O for now. Let's now go to our JavaScript file and pick this out. As it's an ID, we use the hash for our JavaScript to recognize this, unlike a class. Let's call this player display. IDs are unique, unlike classes. Now, in our function, we assign the current player to be shown in our browser each time the function is clicked. We do so using inner HTML. So each time I click, the current player is displayed in the h3 tag with the ID player. Now, using an if statement, if that player is currently player X, we want to change it to player O. This is how you write an if statement. So, if the current player deeply equals, indicated by these three equals marks, and this statement is true, we make the current player now player O. If the statement, however, is false, we simply pass back the string player X. This is essentially the syntax for an if statement. Okay, so let's check this out. Okay, cool. Now let's add an X or an O as well as a result of the if statement. So again, if the current player is player X, we want to add a class of player X to the index of our squares we have clicked. Then we want to change the player to be player O. If the statement is false, we add a class of player O to the square and change it to player X's go. I do think it's super fun to make your own images. I've had some really cool versions of tic-tac-toe shared with me in the past, purely based on styling. So now, back to our style sheet to make an X and an O. I'm going to show you how to import images into your style sheet. First, you need to get to PNG images, each 200 pixels by 200 pixels big. You can find them online or you can go to my GitHub or alternatively you can make your own using editing sites like pixlr.com. Once we have them, simply drop them into your folder. Make sure they are at the root of your folder so they should look like this. Now, using something called background image, we style the player X class and the player O class like this. If you would like to look at my code, I also have a GitHub account under my name, so Anya Kubo. GitHub is where I share all my projects, easy or hard. You will find my version of tic-tac-toe there for you to take and compare your code to. As a final step, I'm going to make the grid look more like a grid using more Flexbox. This is me just adding my own styling here. You can change the colors as you want. There are so many other cool things you can do, such as add animations and so on and so on. I've literally spent hours styling a project before without noticing the time go by. Again, if you're getting stuck or getting error messages, please do reach out to me on my YouTube or Twitter. I'm usually pretty quick at replying. And amazing, you can now play tic-tac-toe against a friend. If you want to build a game that allows you to play against a computer and tells you if you have won or lost, please do watch my other videos on my YouTube channel. Once again, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed my video and big shout out to the GIF Gab community.